How many went through a place of sadness or even almost the feeling of depression? Raise your hand. So you go through that stage and it's like, oh my God, it's a sense of loss. It's a sense of sadness. It's like, oh my God, the world is the world as we know it over. And the only way you get out of that, and it's not, it's not part of being an achiever. Most of us out there, how many of you consider yourself to be an achiever? Part of your identity is I find a way, I make it happen. Look at almost everybody, right? Well, if you're an achiever, you don't just accept things. And so, but the problem is, there's a formula for, for suffering, not for stress, but for suffering. And that formula is you get some massive stress that comes in that you can't control and then you fight it. The more you fight it, the more stress you have. You have to step into a different mode that's not part of most of us are on this, this virtual room we're doing this in together. And that is you gotta accept it. Not accept that it's right or it's fair, but accept it is what it is and I gotta deal with it. And so if you get to that point of acceptance, that's usually where you tell people where they can finally start to let go and be okay. But I don't think that's the final step personally. If you're gonna really have an incredible life, we need to add a step. After acceptance is you must create a new. That's what this whole program is about. It's a new world. It's not just a new year. It's a new world that's gonna require a new you and me. We gotta find a bigger and better part of ourselves. So no matter how big the challenge is, we know that who we are is more than anything that can be done to us. And we know we can find the way, but that means you gotta create a new. And so in order to create a new, you gotta let go of what was. And I just want all of you to know, I don't believe in this term new normal. There is no normal. The world is always going through cycles. And we're in the middle of winter, but you know, people, when things are going well, people think it's gonna be great forever. And it never is. Life is cyclical, it's seasonal, right? So if you have springtime and then you got summer, hot summer, spring's great, it's growing, hot summer, you kind of get tested, then the fall you reap, and then you go to winter. Like what always follows winter, springtime. So when people think it's gonna go good forever, they're wrong, and when they think it's gonna go bad forever. I'm hear people now talking about life as you know it, it's changed forever, it's never gonna be great again. Listen, this winter's gonna last longer than you and I want it to. I bet that. And we're not done with winter but we can learn how to make winter our season so that we're not sitting around hoping for someday when it changes. And by the way, winter will have a new springtime. I don't know when, but I know it'll open up because I'm a student of history, thousand years of Roman history, 550 years of Anglo-American history. I know it because I studied the cycles of how human beings and emotions shape our world and how they change. What follows the night? No matter how tough the night is, the dark night of the soul, you wake up and it's a new day. So. I really want us all to start to think of this week as a way to create our life anew. We gotta decide what parts of me have to start to bloom, what parts of me have to grow, what parts of me have to expand, so no matter what happens, I can have this incredible, extraordinary quality of life. Does that make sense? So the question is, you know, what is it that makes us even wanna make a resolution? I mean, it's an interesting question. Why is it at the beginning of the year we have this tradition? But it goes beyond tradition. It's something inside of us that makes us want to make things better. And I think part of it is the calendar gives us this idea that we can have a fresh start, that we can start from fresh and have this great victory. And it's really, the calendar itself is quite arbitrary. It's wonderful to use it, but if you didn't use it effectively, let's use the calendar to serve you today. Let's just see what does it really take to make this thing happen? Because there's no denying that inside of you, the only thing that's gonna make you happy in the year ahead and the decades ahead, is gonna be having you have an experience where on a regular basis, you feel like your life is making progress. If there's one thing I teach, and I wanna remind you of it, it's really simple. Things, getting things is not gonna make you happy. That's good news in a tough economy, it's a good reminder. You know, it doesn't matter what you get, doesn't matter whether it be money or opportunity, all those things might excite you for the moment. You know, even a relationship, as magnificent it may be, might be exciting for a while, but if you don't keep growing, that relationship isn't gonna stay exciting. So the secret to real happiness is progress. Progress equals happiness. And if we can make progress on a regular basis, we feel alive. And that's why at the beginning of the year, we get this thing like, okay, I can have this fresh start. I can really do what my soul desires. I can expand, I can grow, I can improve, I can change. Or maybe better than change, I could progress. See, think about that. Progress is an aliveness to it, doesn't it? You don't have to work at changing. People say all the time now, well, I'm, I'm working on changing. Don't worry about it. You don't have to work on changing. Change is automatic. 
Your body's going to change whether you want it or not as the years go by. And no matter how hard you work, there's going to be some changes going on there. And the economy is going to change no matter what you want it to do. The weather is going to change. Relationships are going to change. Everything in life is always changing. We don't have to work on change. Change is automatic, but progress is not. So if you want to make real progress, then you really got to look at your life in a different way. You got to say, I got to take control of this process and not just hope it's going to work out like people do who make a resolution. Because really, isn't that what they're really doing at the beginning of the year? They're saying, well, here's my resolutions for the year. And they really basically tell you their wishes. It's their wish list. It's what they hope it all comes together. And then they call it a resolution, but they don't know what a resolution is. When you resolve something, to have a resolution is to resolve it. When you've resolved, this is how it's going to be. That's when you cut off any possibility except the thing you've committed to. There's a story about a man who spends his whole life traveling to the far corners of the earth to seek out some sage or master or yogi who will tell the meaning of life. The seeker crosses the deserts and oceans. He starves and suffers. And finally, he's on his last legs with his rags blowing off his back in tatters as he crawls to the mouth of a cave where an old man wearing nothing but a hair shirt and a long gray beard is sitting cross-legged in the snow. What is the meaning of life, gasps the seeker of truth. The old yogi suddenly looks very surprised. What, he exclaims. So the meaning of life is what? I knew a wise man once, a man I'd really come to admire. I wanted very badly to define the essence of his wisdom, to isolate exactly what was the source of his great insight into life. So I finally asked him, what is it that really makes you different from everyone else? And he said, what makes me different is that I can see that we're all the same. Anybody can see the differences between people. Wisdom is understanding how we're really alike. Abraham Lincoln used to say things like that. And in my opinion, he's one of the most admirable individuals in all of history. Lincoln was a man with a very strong sense of right and wrong. He was able to lead this country through the Civil War because he knew that it was just plain wrong for one man to own another as a slave. But he also understood that the man on the other side of the issue, the person across the battle line, was a human being too, with the same hopes and fears and problems as the people on Lincoln's side. Despite all the differences, Lincoln was able to see the essential sameness, the essential oneness. Like Lincoln, Albert Einstein came from humble beginnings, not just financially, but in the way he was looked upon by other people. When he was a young boy, Einstein was thought to be stupid, and he even flunked elementary mathematics. He was always a little distracted, asking questions, but not able to put those questions into words. Even when he grew up and got a job in the Swiss patent office, nobody guessed that Einstein was still asking questions that would shake the whole world. After he published his theory of relativity, which laid the foundation of the atomic age, Einstein didn't get a swelled head. He kept asking questions about who we are and why we're here and how the universe is made. Even after he was... able to find answers to some of the most profound scientific questions that had ever been put forward, Einstein still remained an essentially humble person, and he never suggested that his answers were the final ones. Why should they be? 
After all, everything in the universe is subject to change, with the single exception being the speed of light. And Einstein had made that discovery himself. People of wisdom are much more interested in questions than in answers. But foolish people are always coming back to conclusions. Like success, wisdom is a process, not a destination. Am I a wise person? I've been talking so much about wisdom, you must be wondering about my qualifications. I suppose everyone who manages to survive and even prosper to some extent has moments of self-satisfaction. Moments when you say to yourself, I've finally got it all figured out once and for all. But usually, something comes along pretty quickly to humble you. So helping people understand that that will pass, that there will be something beautiful again waiting for them. We have to redefine success to be peace. Because if you are not at peace, you are not successful. Do you get that? If pain is driving your need to produce, if you are not successful, you're running away from something. Every day I want to train myself to be prepared for a war. Whatever that war is, whether that's external or internal, the discipline of doing something painful every day I think is one of the most important disciplines that any human being can have. I think that you have to always go back to that student mindset. You have to always go back to that One of the reasons why we struggle with that is we think that when we're full, we're safe. Our ego makes us believe that when you're full, when you think you know it all, that's when you're safe. The craziest thing is, that's when you're at your weakest. Most people never go after what they want because they don't know every step they have to take to get there. Now, the only rule for reaching a goal that you have to know is knowing where you're going and knowing that you're going to get there. You do not have to know how you're going to get there. You need a goal, but we don't want to let your distance from the goal crush you. So you got to set up a goal and then you got to make the goal, break the goal down into parts so that you can move towards it and you have a fairly high likelihood of doing it. 